12 and he's 9. I'm 9 years old. He is 12 and years old. And we're just Christian rappers that like to spread the word of God. My name is Charity and support STI 740. Hi, my name is Jim Dennison. I'm president of the Dennison Forum on Truth and Culture in Dallas, Texas. And I'm really excited today to say a word to parents of teenagers. The most important gift you can give your kids is someone they can follow with integrity to the Lord. The second lesson I'd like to share with you today that I wish somebody had shared with me years ago is this. There's nothing you can do to encourage your children too much. They need your encouragement before they need the encouragement of their friends, of their peers, of anybody else in their lives. They need to know that you believe in them. They need to know that you believe in their gifts and their creativity and the difference they can make today. Our world desperately needs what they can do today. If you're somebody who can give financial resources to this ministry, to this network, to enable this network to reach more young people and parents and encourage them, I want to encourage you to do that. If you're somebody who can pray for this, if you're somebody who can be involved in various ways in this, I want to encourage you to do this. I believe that this platform by which I'm talking to you today is critical to what the Holy Spirit is doing in the kingdom today, and I'm so glad to be part of it. So let's live in a way that our kids can follow. Let's encourage them to be the people God wants them to be. So glad to share that with you today. 25 years ago, there was no cursing or blatant blatant sex talk on the radio. Media shapes our world, our worldview about our day-to-day -day life. Media impacts our view of relationships, work, and school and community. For our children, it defines the way they see themselves and their future. Media tells our girls that their beauty is defined by how revealing their clothing is and how sexy they are. Um, about like, oh, one question, specifically besides that question, is like, can I get somebody to raise their hand to answer this? Um, what's beauty to you? <laughs> like, how do you define a pretty girl? Like, when you see someone, how do you say, oh, she's pretty, she's a pretty girl? <laughs> Alright, to me, beauty. <laughs> yeah. Alright, to me, beauty is not only the way you look on the outside, but your personality and what you do to help other people feel better about themselves. Wow. Hi, my name is Chip Ingram. I'm a pastor in California. But about 18 years ago, God put on our heart is something called Living on the Edge. And uh, someone asked me, so why do you call it Living on the Edge? Because, man, that's where the action is. You know, where you're comfortable, where it's safe. Faith is when you live on the edge. And this entire program about reaching out to youth, you know what it does? It gets them out on the edge. It gets people to say they matter. Uh, they can do something. How media affects us as teens, and it tells us what's acceptable and expected of us in both negative and positive ways. How does the media affect you as a teen? Um, it gives you access to good and bad, and you kind of are like, that's unlimited access, and so you can like pretty much get any information you want to, and like distract, it's a distraction too, um, just from like checking all your social apps to like. Uh, Alright, my name is Brother Sick, I'm Curry, and I'm from the Bible Bible School, and media is, I think it's positive, and at the same time it's negative, I think it's just the way that people use it because it's very powerful. Depends on how you use it. So with me, everything I post is positive and full most of the time.
give off a positive vibe, but it's, I think it's made to give off a negative vibe to receive a positive effect. Like the TV shows, some people don't necessarily think of scandal as being the black girl that likes to sleep with the president. Or like um, Atlanta Housewives, some people don't think of, oh, these people are just ghetto and running around and all this type of stuff. But what they're really doing is creating this, these skits, these sitcoms to get a positive effect, to get viewers and to get people to look at them. And to get that positive effect, they're trying to get the positive effect, but they're receiving the negative one. They're getting people to go out and act like them. They're getting people to go out and do things that they do, and it's not making it, it's not looking so good. To us, the media is a source of information and a way to spread your views to others or people as a whole. I like how they view things and influence them on what you see is right or wrong. What I grew came up with, what media is to us is brainwashing. They tell us what they want us to know and not what we need to know. Like, they tell us about what's happening in ISIS, but they don't tell anybody what happened with the mass slaughter in Nigeria. So they tell us things to provoke us instead of have us actually sit back and think about what's happening. So I think it's just what they need, what they tell us to know, so they'll go out, mess up things up, and they can get money off of us and our stupid decisions, because we're not thinking, or we're not actually looking back at the situation as a whole. Okay. Believe in those that come behind you. Uh, I didn't grow up as a Christian, uh, and the people that I knew growing up, take no offense, but the people that I knew that said, I'm a Christian and I love Jesus, their life was not 1% different than other people. In fact, at times it was worse. And so I rejected God. I said, you know what, I can't believe in God. If he's like these people, I wouldn't want to know that guy. Now, I, I was a young, arrogant guy. But you know what happened? Some people believed in me in my late teenage, teenage years. And, and they took something that I was interested in. Now, I wasn't interested in Cameron's technology and all the stuff these guys are doing. But man, I was a Jonesaholic on the basketball court. Yeah, because even the Thunder, they're 18 and 19. They won last night when they acquired Dion Waiters from the Cavaliers in a three-team trade. So I think the teams that may have a chance of getting in, Grizzlies, Thunder, if they pick up their play, because they lost two in a row. When they were shooting horribly, that the, team, the two games they lost, it was by a combined 54 points. So yeah, like that's not good. I don't think that, that's not really I think, good. I think what they have to do, I think they have to really pick up their play and get a lot better. I mean, like, do you think the Thunder can like pick up their play though? Like yeah. at this point of the season? They got Kevin Durant. I mean, just because they got one player, who else they got? Russell Westbrook. Yeah, it's, keep going. Reggie Jackson. I mean, I still don't. I don't. I don't, I don't like. The, I don't like. Deion Waiters didn't do nothing at the Cavs. Yeah. 15 he didn't, points. He didn't do nothing. 15 points last night. And he had a three that put the Thunder up by four. That's one game, though. I mean, like, I still don't like the way Deion Waiters plays. So I think, like, the Thunder straight. I mean, you may not I, I don't like think him, that was but they're still pretty good. You may not like him. No, I don't think they're going to do anything. You may not like him. We're going to have to get. We're going to have to see at the end of the season. Yeah, we sure will. I don't think we sure gonna, will when the Thunder are in the playoffs. I mean, I think they might make it to the playoffs, but might, I mean, I don't think they can do nothing. Dude. They've only played five, All right, so five, seven games. When I'm saying that, I don't think they're going to do nothing. I mean, like, get to the championship. I don't think they're going to make it there. I mean, I think they can make it to the playoffs, but no, I don't think they're going to no. make it to the championship. They beat the Spurs without Kevin Durant. Also, but nothing against the Spurs. They don't have Kawhi Leonard. But really, the only shot maker that you had at the time, Reggie Jackson and Russell Westbrook. And I think Deion Waiters really going to help the second bench with scoring. Man, I don't know about He's that. He's averaging 15.8 points. I guess we'll just have to find out about that. Yeah, we sure will. And I had a coach say, tell you what, you go to that camp, I'll pay your way. And they invested in my life. I had a high school coach who he played me one-on-one -on -one, uh, in, in the middle of every day. And he said, I believe in you. My dad was an alcoholic. Uh, my dad was a good guy, but was just completely absent. And a coach invested in my life in an area that mattered to me that led me to understand who Jesus Christ was and that I got purpose in my life. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Everyone has a purpose. God made us for a good work to walk in. 
He loves every single person. They have not just a, a DNA in their body, they've got a DNA in their soul. And He cares about them. And He calls us as the body of Christ to reach into those who don't know that, find out where they're at, what they're interested in, love them, and give them an opportunity. You're watching a station right now that does that. So keep pressing ahead. Let's make this happen.
factor because people are gonna take what they see and run with it. But I mean, that's that's just cruel and unusual. I don't understand it. Like, if you real, they gonna feel your realness. But I mean, it's what it is. And like, people just need to calm down. <laughs> We agree with her. Yes is our answer, and it's set up as a stereotype. And it tells you how we should look like, how we should dress, and um, when you're different, like they shut you out at moments. So that's a good one. Oh, oh yeah, you also put labels on people too. Wait. Labels. People who are stereotyped based upon what they look like, how they behave, how they dress, what side of town they live on. And we do this oftentimes without even thinking because it is what we see, sometimes what we see on TV gives us a perception of the way a person, the way we think that person is, may not really be what they are. But because we saw something in the media or on TV, we have this conception that this is the way these people act. This is the way these people talk. This is what these people do. And so the media shapes our perception of individuals, and it shouldn't be that way. We should have the opportunity to get to know people and we make our judgment based upon that interaction of us actually knowing for ourselves. How do you want to make a difference? Okay, when you come to put it down on your flip chart, how you plan to make a difference, then we're going to say what's the next step. But we first have to cast the vision. How about that? Someone here have the vision kind of summarizing what you heard today. We hear passion. We hear intelligent thinking. We hear we want to do something. We can't just go with the stereotype and status quo and where everybody is right now. We really want to set this in motion. Take a step back. Somebody give me a summary. What are we really talking about? What kind of vision are we talking about? All right. Yeah, I want everybody to hear you. You can come to my side right here. And I don't know where the other mic is. Where's the other mic?